So good morning, everyone. Um, today, Rachel and I are going to be doing a live with uh, Stamperia for you. We've got two very different projects uh, to work with. Both of us are making little albums. I'm working with Alchemy and I'm going to make this little album, which is almost like a, a modified matchbook um with that added pages inside so we're going to make this and the products that i'm using are the stamperia 8x8 and the 12 by 12 paper so as the 8x8 is sbbs 51 but i don't have the 12 by 12s to give you the code for that i'm afraid i'm also using one of the alchemy texture impression plates uh K3 PTA 5607. Some of the wooden shapes from KLSP 116, which works really well. Um, and then some cream paste, K3 P53 that went in the molds. Uh, anthracite paint, KAL88. Copper and gold ceramicas bronze and gold glamour sparkles and some MDF pieces and then craft blue. So I don't know what um, Rachel is going to be using or if she's going to swap her camera around. I'm going to turn my camera down now and um, then you'll be able to just see what I'm up to. Oh, let's get Excellent. that in the right place and put some more light on. Yeah. I'm just going to ask Lucrezia if she can take me out of the, the um, that's better, because you don't need to see my ugly mud shot all the way through, that is for sure, there are definitely limits to what's going on and what's needed. So, Rachel, are you going to introduce your project? Is that okay? Yes. And I'll get my next bits ready. Right, this is um, the project I'm going to do today. It's using the, the lovely Klimt um, collection. So I'm going to take you through this. And I've actually used um, the fabric to cover my journal. And this, the great thing about this is it acts as a hinge because it's um, a really, it's quite a strong fabric. It's um, a polyester of some sort so it acts as a really good hinge for your journals so i'm just going to tell you the code for this the code for this is s for sierra b for bravo t for papa l for lima t for tango zero one and it's a it's a lovely pack of four four squares of the fabric and i'm just going to use um, the leftover from the journal I've just made. I'm also going to be using this mould, which is K3PTA4515. I'm going to be using some of the clear die cuts, and they are DFLDCP20. And I'll also be using some of the um, chipboard die cuts, which I'm looking for a label. Hang on, bear with me. Which is DFLDC51. And I'm going to be using the lovely Maxi Background Selection. And um, they're quite um, spectacular. And I'll also be using the 6x6 collection. So I'm using that and I'll be using some of the paints, which I'll go through as I use them, um, some of the adhesive. I've got Aquacolor in um, Argento Iridescent, which I'm going to use a tiny bit of. And I've got some mixed media glue, which I'll be using, some wax, um and i think that is about it for my ingredients list so hello everybody <laughs> 
So I've already cast my mould and given it a coat of black gesso. So I'm ready to go with that and paint it. Now you can use black or white gesso. What I, I like to use black gesso underneath most of my um, paintwork because for me, I find that um, gives me more density and is more forgiving to my style of painting. If I've sometimes used the white gesso and with white gesso, what you'll find is that your, your colors will be a lot brighter. So if you want a, a, a brighter look, then use white gesso. So, um, did you want to talk about so what I've, you're Yeah, so I'm starting by constructing the covers for my album. And to do that, for the back panel and the bottom flaps, I've cut a piece of mount board that is seven inches tall by four inches wide for the top piece. For the piece that will form the bottom, it's four inches wide um, and one inch deep. And then the last piece is four inches by one and a half inches. And I've laid them onto a piece of the paper from the 12 by 12 um, paper collection leaving a gap to make it easy for um for this for these areas to move long term now if i was doing this um real time and for myself i would be used co coating everything properly in the craft glue but that tends to make the papers quite soggy and then you really do need once the covers are covered over them to dry before you try bending the hinges because wet paper um will crack and and um and not look very nice so that's but so today i've just used a bit of craft glue in a tube dispenser so that i can have it less soggy and easier to work with and i've mitered my corners here so uh, and then tuck these little pieces in so that i've got nice covered corners of my book because edges of things are the bits that tend to take a lot of the wear and tear and I'm just giving it a really good push and a burnish down and then I'm going to repeat the same process but for the other piece the piece that will form the top and the um the back of, of the front of my book and for that piece I have a piece of chipboard that is four inches wide and eight inches tall and that I'm literally just going to adhere onto here and as you can see I've actually used the back cover of my 12 by 12 paper to do that so that um, I'm not wasting any paper um, it doesn't seem sensible just to throw a cover away if you're not going to fussy cut any of the images and my other other piece um, is four inches wide and one and a quarter inches tall and that will allow the flap to sit over the bottom piece so that will come onto here and again I'm just leaving a nice um piece here to make it easier for covering um and then we will this piece i've deliberately left longer because i'm going to use this piece of paper to attach to the back piece and so and i'm then going to just literally mitre my corners making sure i've left a gap here so that again i've got my covers cornered and that's what i did on the other piece um, and that's what creates the, the neatness of the project. So I'm going to pop that there and cover that one. Pop that onto that. It's going there. And before I cover, turn the rest of this in, I'm going to take my back piece and attach it to here. 
So that I'm just going to add glue onto here to do that. That can then go onto there like so. So I've got my pieces all together before turning everything over. And I'm sorry, it's it's a long project, so it makes it quite difficult, I think, for 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 on there, but there we are. So we'll just cover this lot and then I'm going to pop the, the back or the, the cover aside whilst I construct some of the pages because I really, before I fold it too very much, I want to, um, as I say, let it dry properly. So there we are. So, good whack of glue, but not cover the whole thing. And just let the glue grab um, on its own. So I don't know, Rachel. Are you? What do you want to talk through constructing your album now, darling? Um, yes, I can. Just, um, what I've done is I've cut. Um, I just used packaging card for my the base of my journal, and then I've taken a piece of the fabric, which I've cut to size. And as Jill was saying, really, I've mitered the edges to make sure it folds in nicely. And I've put plenty of mixed media adhesive on my cardboard as I'm placing it on here. Now, the size I've used for mine is four by four, four inches by four inches I've used. And for me that's quite a nice little size for this but you can tailor this project to be absolutely any size you want and like i said the fabric will act as a hinge i don't have to worry about putting a hinge in here at all it's gonna it's gonna be a really nice long lasting hinge the trick with putting this all together really is lots of adhesive at the moment just to make sure everything sticks in place and I found this mixed media glue was ideal oh I might have been a little bit excitable with that one I'm just gonna have to move it a little bit there we go oh that's fine that's all in place now lovely so I'm just sticking it all into place and the fabric's going to make a great hinge for my book. And when I do these corners now, I'm adding a little bit of extra adhesive on the outside of these just to give me a nice corner shape. So it's very gluey at the moment. Very gluey indeed, but um, it's all worth it. So just coming round now to the top end. And that's all. So whilst okay. Rachel's gluing that, on the inside of my <coughs> uh, cover, I've cut uh, some strips of just plain black cardstock. It's not particularly heavy um, because I didn't want to add the bulk, particularly for the hinge areas. And it's three and seven eighths inches wide so just slightly smaller than the album itself cover itself because then I've got a nice border of pretty papers where I fold it back and I'm going to glue that in place because that again will make you know makes for it, it to be a lot lot easier from from that, that point of view so and then I do have some extra bits cut um, and some of them seem to have gone with that which is always a good move not but never mind we will worry about that later okay so but this really before I do anything and add anything to here needs now to properly dry if I try folding this before it's dry <clears throat> then all that's going to happen is I'm going to have, uh, you know, the paper, the back card will just lift up. So I've got a little heater behind me, and I'm going to stick that on the floor behind me to let that dry down there. 
top these pieces so I don't lose them um, from it. Okay, now my, my spine mechanism is called um, Stack the Deck. And it's a really easy spine mechanism to do. Um, and it, it just um, makes life very easy for making a spine. So I've cut a piece of, um, of paper, the, the depth that I want my pages to be, um, which is th three and three quarters. And then it's two inches high and I've scored at half an inch and one and a half inches and I've given that a score and I've burnished it really well. The, the key to making things like this really is to wriggle the page bit, bits back and forth as many times as possible so they move. So that is one piece and then the second piece which is where it gets the title st stack the deck is actually smaller so it's the same width she says and it's not so I shall chop those to the, that one down it's clearly my mass was not in a good place or my measuring was not in a good place there we are when I prep this but instead of being two inches tall it's one and a half inches tall and it's again it's scored at half um, an inch and an inch and that gives me the same depth of flap and I shall again just give it a really good wriggle back and forth um, <clears throat> you can use a bone folder and um, I've done it several times already. And then this piece literally just needs to be glued in the center of here. So you're stacking the two pieces and you want it to be reasonably central in here. So you've stacked the two pieces of card on top of each other and created four little tabs here you can see them that will um, allow me to attach my pages in place um, so that's it's not that we have that image is better so I think Rachel's carry on quite happily covering hers so that that's the the base pieces of my things I think lots of ladies have joined us and I because um, we were busy creating right from the get-go um i think we haven't said welcome to everyone so thank you for joining us ladies and for spending your choosing to spend your morning with us because i know that life can get very busy and very hectic and it's lovely to see everyone joining from all parts of the world um so there you go and getting on and having fun and staying part of our Stamperia family. So I've now got um, lots of different pieces of card in my pack and the, my pages are, are all based on the same sort of process but with some you know, subtle changes. So where I want a single page I've cut a strip of back card three and three quarter inches wide seven and three quarters tall and I've used a quarter inch um, a half inch corner around around the side and simply cut um, paper then to go on top of it um, and clearly when I was cutting that my brain was not in gear because I've cut it upside down but hey ho that be life so I uh have -huh, yeah so, we are now going to just literally add this piece on, and then I'm going to create a pocket. So, where are you up to, Rachel? Right, I have covered my inside panels using the six by six pad because it's the the images are just a little bit smaller, so it's quite nice for a project like this. So I've got my cover in place and I've got my inside panels in place. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my elastic. I'll show you on the album I did. I've added elastics to hold my pages in place, which means that I can take my pages out to work on them and add more things or I can swap them around um, I can put different things in here. It just gives me a little bit of um, freedom. 
So I'm just going to pop my elastic in. And all I did to do this was I've taken a crocodile. Any sort of punch will, you know, you just you need a punch. And I'm going to punch two holes at the top and two holes at the bottom. I'm just being mindful because I want them level. I can You can set um, some punches to make sure that they are level. So I've come in about maybe um, mm, about quarter of an inch to, yeah, about quarter of an inch, I'd say, I've come in. Now, you could add some... Um, eyelets to these holes if you wanted to to give them a little bit of strength but I'm feeling I'm feeling confident that it'll be fine like this so I'm just threading my elastic in through and then I've taken just some little beads you can dangle anything off these um off these elastics and if you're making a bigger album, you can um, you, you can keep going. You can add add more and more. So I'm just going to take that in that hole there. So there we go. That's threaded across there. Ooh. And I've got my elastics. Both my elastics are inside at the moment. So I'm going to take this one back out now. So it's coming out and I'm going to take another bead. And I'm going to pop another bead on here. Like so. And I'm going to take my elastic back inside. So it's back inside my journal there. And then I've got my elastics to put my pages on now I am going to I'm going to cut some off this but I'm not going to do my final cut until I have put my pages in and I know how tight I want it um, because if it, I don't want it to be too tight for the number of pages I want to put in there so I'm just tying it off for now and then all I've done is I have taken a sheet from the background um, paper, just one sheet of 12 by 12, and I've cut three strips that are three and a half inches long, which I've then chopped into different portions. So these three are seven inches long, and this is just what was left. And then I've rounded the corners and I'm going to fold these in half and I'm going to put them into my album as pages. So I don't know where you're up to. Jill. OK. So on my first page, I've just torn a scrap of paper and then added an embellishment cluster. So a strip of torn paper, a little bit of the Stamperia um, embellishment lace um that i was sent in my uh, pack at christmas and then the these are elements from the paper pad that i've just cut out and i've added a little bit of string to that tag now that's the way this is going to sit in my book when it's open and so my next page is going to set like this so that when i'm got it open it looks everything is upright and that requires me to um you, you just have to think a little bit about it when when you're doing it because otherwise you end up with a bit of um a, a, a pickle really so um when you're when you're doing this and you need a little, just a little bit of corner rounding to to gain to make life um easier for, for me so i wanted an extra page here and so I've taken a long strip of, um, basically it's an A4 length of paper, cut at three and three quarters, scored at seven and three quarters. And then I've um, 
folded it to make a pocket and you don't need to add these bits that was my fault but hey ho it won't matter in the grand scheme of things it will get covered um up so to create my pocket and lining it i've got a piece of paper that i've cut that will fit in the side of here and i think i'm going to use that side that which is the beauty of course of double-sided papers um and i'm just going to stick this piece in place here now i've opted really not not to um distress or add any inks to my pages partly because it makes the process a little bit quicker and partly because it, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with what you what you do it, you know it makes life easy so that's going to get lined up there and you've noticed i've only put it, it glue down the two sides so that will create me a pocket that i can then add um paper onto so that's going to go there and that goes on to there that will cover the deliberate mistake because we're good at covering deliberate mistakes we then need a, a, you know, and then to keep things consistent i'm using the same um same sort of process in terms of my embellishment clusters so I'm just cutting the sorted strips of my card, tearing an edge so that it looks, you know, it is what it is, popping that in place, adding a short length of uh, ribbon to make it look pretty. And then I've got a tag cut, or the, yeah, a tag cut from the 8x8 paper pack um, and all, all the way through the album, again, for consistency, I've done the same thing with the tags. I've just taken um, a hole punch, mine's a cropper dial, added a little hole to the top of the tag and add, then added a length of string to the, um, to, through the hole. And the process I'm using is called a lark's head. So I've got, got my loop of my thread I'm going to push, push it through the hole so that the loops are here. I'm then going to feed the two string ends through and pull it tight. And then to make it more secure, I'm adding a little knot. And to make it sit down neatly, all I'm doing is holding the knot where I want it to be and pulling down to it. And that way you get the knot in the perfect place for the and that just adds a little bit of detail, but without adding masses of bulk, because um, I didn't w want to add lots of bulk inside my album. So that is then going to go there. We've got a little card, but these could have you know pages, watercolor pages, any pages, uh, little bits for photographs, you name it, whatever you want to put into there will work just fine okay um and then i will be repeating the process with different papers to create the next page so uh, we'll just add this one into here cover that and rachel i think is going to spend quite a lot of time um painting and decorating today and we thought between us that actually that might be a really nice thing for people to actually see that um, the process uh, of painting the resins because um, I think some times it's more difficult and sometimes people struggle with with doing that. Um, so there we are. So we've now got an extra a piece of card on there. So if Rachel wants to talk through what she's doing now because I can see she's doing something that's looking quite interesting. Um, and it might be helpful for people to know exactly why she's doing what she's doing. Oh, I'm making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've got my glove on. I'm having a lovely time. Um, I have taken some ribbon, some seam binding, and um, this is supposed to be seam binding, but I don't believe it is. Um, because it's it's a very different um, texture, but either way, it's just it's a piece of ribbon. And what I've done is I've just added 
um, some of the acrylic paints. I sprayed it first with water and then I've just added some little drops of acrylic paint here and there, which I've then used my gloved hand um, to just scrunch up, just to keep scrunching up. And that's given me a really nice, I really like this color blend. And normally I do this, I don't put a glove on, but um, I, I thought it'll save me going to wash my hands if I, I do this now. And then I'm just using my heat dryer just to dry this off, just to get it dry enough so I can pop it to one side um, and it'll be fine. And the heat from the dryer will sort of set the colours a bit as well, which is really nice. So as you can see on the mat, it sort of it turns to mud when you add all of these colours. But as they soak into the fabric, you get some really nice variations. So that's really nice. So I'm going to pop this to one side in a minute. And then I will tell you how I paint my resin. I think that's about done. Let me... Excellent. While Rachel is doing that, for the next page, I've kept, I've used the same long length, so the A4 piece of, of black card, but instead of using the extra panel um, created by scoring it to use um, to join two pages together, I've just folded it back to make the pocket because that then gives just gives me that um you know it, that, that that little bit that's extra uh, and an extra detail and it's somewhere else to stick little notes maybe receipts maybe little pictures i mean this album will hold the little scalpy um you know uh, self tiny photographs really well and although it's reasonably bulky um in terms of its overall size and dimensions you could pop it into a handbag if you wanted to um to you know to carry it around with uh, important photographs maybe you know that suit you or you can just use it as a small album to document um you know what you've been doing a visit to a science museum or your even your thoughts and your things so that's going in there now I'm not going to attach these to my pe my pages to my hinges yet because that's still uh, in the process of drying. So, um, but that will be the top. These will be the top pages here and here. And when the when it's on the first of the spines, this piece is going to go on like that. So I'm just going to pop those two off to the side. Um, and my last page that that re really requires uh, talking to because the rest of the processes are repeated until it comes to putting it together is this trifold page so this is cut seven and three quarters tall and then it it's it's 11 and a quarter this way and it's scored at three and three quarters seven and a half that gives me two pages that will turn over and i've just corner rounded the edges that i wanted to be corner rounded so that yeah after that i've repeated the process through the album so to make life you know a, a, as straightforward as possible and it does require a little bit of thinking about when it comes to where you're adding you know, um, your corner rounding pieces so this is going to be the front of my panel, so I need a corner around top, bottom, and on the other side, but not on that corner. So there we are. So let's just pop that there. And this piece is going to go. Do I want that? Do I, well, I'll have to, yeah. Having done it that way, we'll have to have it that way. So that's what I mean by you have to think about what you're doing. Choose the side before you do your corner rounding, because if I, you know, if you don't put it on your corner round, it's the right side. You just have to reorganise your thought processes as to how you're organising it. 
And then I thought, how am I going to add a little bit of extra detail to that? So I've taken a piece of card that um, was actually just a, a, a scrap piece that was cut. Um, so it is about 11 centimetres by 10 centimetres. And I've scored it at, at two centimetre intervals. And then I'm just going to fold those in and so I'm going to fold the two sides in and then lift the back over and that gives me a pocket with some dimension um so there we are so I'll do that in place whilst, whilst Rachel's happily drying her okay so that is going to tuck onto there <coughs> to give me a little pocket and wanted something <clears throat> to add something different so I've got again one of the little cut apart pieces from the 8 by 8 paper pad and that's going to embellish the front of the pocket that's going to go there I've got a tag with the beautiful owl and that will slip into there quite nicely and also another of the cut fussy cut you know, postcards. So that then forms that. <clears throat> and then for the inside, we're going to add some extra decorations. So I think we will pop that there and there and add a little bit of corner rounding to that edge. And I'm not worried particularly. Some of these papers have got text that's obviously one way in some areas and then up, 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 go, goes in the uh, different uh, orientation in other areas. So actually it makes it easier when adding things together, I think. So that's going to do that. And I'm going to keep that deliberately plain and simple. Uh, <clears throat> now, the albums, you know, any album, I think most people will understand, is quite paper heavy. And then you have to think about how you're going to use your spaces. You know, buying several out piece pads of paper is always a good option, but you know, it's not always within everyone's budget. And you don't need to have every piece of paper covered within half a millimeter of its life with beautiful papers. You can, you, know, you can just add little strips. So these are two centimeter strips of paper, the height of the book. Um, they were bits that I had actually just got left over. And I've just glued them top and bottom and then taken these cards from the um, from the 12 by 12 papers and folded them in half. And when, when the band, belly band is dry, they will literally just tuck underneath so that you've got areas for photographs or to hide things or to pop things. Um, and of course, you can also tuck in more, um, you know, more pages as and when you want. And the beauty of double sided is, is you can choose which ones you want on the front, depending on how you fold them and where you're putting them. So that then goes into there. And that goes into there, right? Like so, and I've got a piece of paper for the bottom, which I'm going to leave like that and corner around my bo the bottom pieces. There we are. So Rachel has started painting. So I'm going to hand, hand back to the chattering to Rachel so that she knows exactly what is going. You know, you, she can talk you through her thought process while I carry on because as I say, the remaining pages are essentially made in exactly the same way as this, but with different papers, but the process is the same. So. Rachel, over to you, my darling. Oh, lovely. Well, I started painting, as you can see, um, and it's really important to remember when you're painting these sort of things. If you, you know, I mean, it depends how you like to paint, but if you want to paint in detail, it's really important to remember it's a process of, of layers that you're looking at. And I like to start with the palest colour first, and I generally, if there's a face on what I'm painting, then I'll always start with that because 
as you can see, it's not a particularly um, delicately painted face. I've been mindful of not getting brush strokes um, that are going to cause an uneven texture. But other than that, I've just chucked it on there because I know that as I come on now with the next colours, I can tidy this up and I can neaten it up. And because it's the lightest colour that's gone down first, I, it's even easier to tidy up. So now the hair is going to be a series of, oh, wrong colour, it's going to be a series of layers as well. So I'm just using Cookie to start with, which is my favourite um, colour, I think. I just love it. Cookie and turquoise, favourite colours. Um, but I'm just adding, adding a layer of this and I'm moving what I'm painting whenever I need to. I'm not struggling to try and get to areas. I'm just moving it as and when I need to get to various areas. And I'm not worrying about how it's looking particularly at the moment because I know there's going to be more layers going on and there'll be more detail come into light. So the most important thing for me now is to, to build up these layers, to make sure I've got kitchen towel in my hand or near me, or a, a towel of some sort or a cloth so that you can dry your brush if you clean it between colors. And I've also got a palette here just to make it a little bit easier to get my colors. Obviously, working on a glass mat would would do the job as well. So I'm just coming in with this first layer on here, and it's um, you know you can see it at the moment. If I show you the finished piece, you can see there that her hair has got various shades in it. And you'll see that come together now as when we add the next layer on top of this. So I'm just going to keep going and finish this layer off. I've dried between layers as well because I don't necessarily want it to, to blend. I want to actually build up the layers. So how are you getting on, Jill? I'm fine. I'm just carrying on adding, you know, doing a repeating that, you know, essentially the same um, processes to make my additional pages at the moment. So feel free to carry on talking your way through your paper. Okay. Um, so, ladies, yeah. I'm sorry we're not really looking at, at all of the comments that are coming up on screen. We do really value you being here, though, because, it, you know, we recognize that. Life can be quite busy, and it's a uh, you know it's a real privilege for people to choose to spend um, their time crafting with us or work, you know watching what we're doing. Um, so literally, all I'm doing is carrying on and repeating the, the you know exactly the same processes that I did all the way through for consistency. I will photograph my album and then put it you know it up online page by page so that you can see the detail on you know on the colors and pages that I've used and exactly how each page uh, you know, has been put together in terms of the imagery and don't be afraid when you're working with things to add and layer things up so this is just a cartouche from the paper pad and then I've, we've got a beautiful image of uh, the lady in the moon and it fits perfectly, surprisingly, in the corner of there to add a little bit of extra detail. So there we are. So that's what's going on there. So that's happy there. You know, the time for doing things like this really, uh, you know, it is in the um, in, in preparing and prepping and actually just having to think about the orientation of what you're doing as you're doing it yeah you know, i've got my usual um, supply of little uh, envelopes and things with everything in which shouldn't surprise anyone too greatly so we now have 
another of these um, pocket pages. So let's pop that over there. That is going to be orientated onto the back of there. That's going to go onto there. That will go there. So it, even though I've done this, I know exactly where I'm going. I still, you know, chunner away, talk to myself to make sure I actually do know exactly where I'm heading and to make sure that I am layering properly. So this is this pocket, um, pocket page that flaps down. Um, Because that's what makes life easy for me. I think that's what I did. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't what I did. No, that wasn't what I did. Do forgive me. That was not what we did for this one. We pop that one onto there. And the advantage, of course, of, of wet glue over... Um, over you know high tack tape is it allows you to lift stuff off if you go ah that wasn't quite what i intended to do and clearly having a bit of glue with a bit of wriggle time again can sometimes be um a significant advantage when you do that do that there they are. so this is just a straightforward pocket rather than adding an extra page completely into the album and that will probably make more sense when i um when i put the pages all together so those are two going in there we've got a little bit of a torn strip of paper to add into there another piece to go here yeah so the problem with it with uh, doing the beautiful colouring that, that Rachel always does is that there's all there needs to be lots of drying in between areas. If you just carry on and think, oh, I haven't got time or it won't matter when you're painting adjacent areas, all that happens is that the colours muddy and mix and you end up with an almighty um, mess. So it really does matter. Um, taking that time to let it dry for it's you know properly before you take add into the next um, or the next color or the next layer that you're doing. Um, so there we are. Right, so I'm actually adding now a second layer on the hair. And I'm using the orange paint, which is KAL08. And I'm just popping that on top of the cookie that I've previously painted. I also went in and I saw a little bit that needed touching up as well. So I did that while I was at it. And don't be afraid to, you know, make sure you've got sort of two or three different brush sizes when you're you know if you're wanting to do detailed painting obviously there are times when you can just do you can just do a wash of color and because of how amazing these molds are you'll get lots of detail anyway but if you want to actually pick out the detail then you'll want a selection of, of brushes so that you can move between them as and when you need to. So you can see I'm starting to get just various shades and tones in her hair now. As I'm adding this. And I've not I've not gone back to the face yet. We will go back to the face and do some finer finer detail and I'll show you how I, I get my finer detail as well because it's not difficult again because the molds are so well made and the detail in them is so good painting in fine detail is relatively easy if you're 
just a little bit patient with it. So you can see I've swapped brushes to a much finer one. There we go. I'm just going to add a little bit more. A little bit more orange on her hair there. And I'm very happy with that. And then I'm going to start on my background and I'm going to use um, turquoise on my background. Not only because, you know, when I'm, when I'm choosing my colours, I look at the papers I'm using and I try and pull the, the colours from there. But also if I want an image to pop like this one, I'll choose complementary colours on the colour wheel. So turquoise is opposite orange on the colour wheel. So they'll really work together and they'll really pop, the turquoise will really pop this red hair for us. So I probably need a little bit more than that. So, and I'd like to echo what Jill said as well, thank you so much for stopping by to watch us. And I'm sorry if we're not um, answering comments, but as Jill said, we, we can't actually see them. So, but we'll have a look have a look later and um, answer anything that needs answering. So I'm just using this turquoise now in the background. I really love this print collection. It's, um, there's so much to it. So many details. So I'm just again, I'm moving, moving the piece as I go to suit where I want to paint. I'm not struggling to see any of the areas that I'm painting. I'm actually moving what I'm painting. And I would always do this with any type of painting. Move your piece so that you can get the best possible results, really. Right, I'm going to paint over everything, all the detail on the bottom, because I'm going to be able to go over this with other colours and because the pigment is so good in the, um, the Stamperia paints it means I won't have a problem going over them at all. And just you can see, look at that lovely contrast between the turquoise and the orange it really works there we go. how are you getting on Jill I'm okay I'm okay well I think I'm okay <laughs> it's oh, famous well, last words that isn't it but there we are so that I might have uh, might have um you know that, might have actually just made a mess of this, but hey ho, it'll all work out in the grand scheme of things because that's what life's about. And sometimes it's good to make you know have to rethink what you're doing part way through. So I, I'm this is my <clears throat> the last of the pages, and then I will flip back to the album and finish off doing some bits for that. Because so I think I'm going to need to retrieve a piece, some pieces of paper from the pad. I wondered why I'd got some bits left over when I was uh, I'd finished uh, putting everything into their envelopes, and now I know. There we are. So that's going to go in there. This will go in there. And that's coming along beautifully. I have to say, it is coming along really nicely. So 
Thank you. Well, I'm going to break my um, ruler. Well, not really a rule, but I'm not going to dry this layer now because I want to add some brown around the edge just to blend this in. And um, because I want it to blend rather than sit on top, I'm going to just leave this so there won't be any any drying going on and then i'm just gonna work this this is earth brown i'm using which is kal106 and i'm just gonna work that in around the edge and if it's not quite blending like that just moisten your brush slightly And you'll get it to blend in. There you go. So I'm just going to continue edging this. I can paint these all day. I really could. They're so beautiful. And again, just scrubbing my brush just a little into the mold just to blend that in so it's not too stark a contrast so i've yeah. now picked i've picked up my album and it's not completely dry so um but it is working for me so i've just literally taken my bone folder and wriggle down where I need that top paper, piece of paper to go into the grooves a little bit to allow the album to come together. So having done that, my album now sits like this. Um, and clearly my measuring was not as good as it might have been, but hey ho, we will not worry about that. So on here, we then need to think about covering some of these pieces up. So I'm going to pop this piece onto there. And that will be because, because I'm a woolly, I used the bottom as a top when I put it together and orientated my papers. But hey, ho. Right, let's see what we can do there. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, that will work. We will get it to work. And I'm sorry about the noise. The heavens have decided to open in that wonderful place called Manchester that is world renowned for being wet and rainy. Um, and <clears throat> So there we are. So that piece. So all I'm doing now is adding some extra layers of paper to the back, which again helps reinforce everything. That one to go onto there. These were all cut to size, so they all helped if you map. Go into that, go into that. So these are just little extra pieces of paper that I cut to fit the return areas of the album um, to make my life easy. Uh, or as easy as possible. I really don't know what I did there, but hey, ho. But there we are. And I now need, no, I need another piece to go on there. So I'm going to fish through my file. Over here. 
I know I have to. I haven't. Yeah. Yes. So that will. So that needs to be three and three quarters or there around or just over. In fact, it's three and seven and eight. So that's just an extra piece of that. That. A lot of this is going to be covered, so it won't matter. That can go there. That can go there. Yeah. That piece will go into here. And then that will be the inside of the back of the book. Oh dear, that's gone wobbly. So let's just straighten you up. There we are. There we are. Another torn scrap of paper tucks into that corner. These bit, these little bits just add extra places for you to pop things. So they're quite um, they're quite useful to have bits like this or areas where you can add little tuck spots. They just add make things a little bit more interesting overall. Yeah, and I think that I guess they're a feature of a lot of the makes that I do is just adding these layers, clusters. Uh, extra details to what I'm doing. And here, I'm just being slightly careful where I put the glue because clearly I want that pocket to open and work. So that's going to go there. That's going to go on the top of there. I've got a little cartouche to go there. I can cover that little bit. And another element. So that's going to go into there. Right. So the next piece that needs to happen is I need to put my spine um, piece on the back. And I am going to use a little bit of tape on here for um, instant stickability, but uh, as well as some glue. So give me while I add that for some extra stickability. Um, you could do it all with super but actually glue is a far better solution and because this is a potentially moving object than actually using um, the ultra forte glue is a good move so that is then centralized as my page so this is the little piece i made earlier for, you know as the stack in the deck covering my pages so that's going to go into there Going to go into there, and I am really pushing this down well. It's worth taking the time when you're doing this real time to to actually do that. Rachel, Michelle yeah. Art has asked if you, you know, um, what are your paintings? So perhaps we ought to go back to you because um, what I, all I'm going to do now is actually stick my pages on to the page of the spine. Is that yeah, okay? Can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, um, where I'm at now is, so where we finished was I just put some um, brown around the edge here. So now what I've done is I've taken some of the red paint. Um, the red I've got here is Rosso Caldo Cal, and that's Cal 06. And I've mixed it with just a little of the ivory, which is KAL12. And what I've been doing is I've been using my um, my fine brush and I'm just gently adding cheeks. And then I've taken some of the, the red on its own and added some lips. And then I've also taken this pink that I've used. So whatever pink you use for the cheeks, for this sort of um, little piece, you can then take that pink and bring it down onto the arms and around her forehead and on her neck. 
and definitely on her nose um, because you know as we know when we look in the mirror um, we've got all kinds of colours in our skin so I put a little bit on her eyes but the other colour I also really like to put on eyes and it's not as um, not as, it's not eyeshadow <laughs> it's just I just like pop a little bit of blue on there I'm just gonna blend that in now just a little bit of blue because again we have so many different color tones in our skin I just really like to emphasize that by making sure I put a few different color tones in anything that I'm painting you know I mean gosh we have so many different colors in our skin and I think it's really nice to just add that so it just gives gives what you're painting a little bit more detail so I think um, I'm happy with that so far now I'm just going to quickly for a second, there we go, that's all, all the drying that's needed is, is very small amounts, there we go, and I've also got some of the colour I've used for skin tone beside me, so if at any point I think, oh, that went a little bit too far for me, I can come back in with a little bit of skin tone that I've used and correct it. There's no, no panicking, no worrying. It's all good and it's all coming together. Now, when I'm doing these kind of um, very small pieces for eyebrows, what I like to do is I like to use a colour pencil. Um, it's just the easiest way to work with these fine details now because of the way that the molds are designed and because they're designed so well you'll find that these areas are quite raised so all you need to do is just be very gentle with a colored pencil and it will it will take it excellent and so whilst that sorry rachel carry on and because I was just going to say, and because our paints are all matte, the pencil will sit on there quite nicely. And I've, I've just gone over a tiny bit, so I'll just tidy that up with my paint and we'll be happy days in again. Excellent. So I've been adding some pages and as you see, I've got some clips so to make life easy. So this little flap here that I'm wiggling, is one of the hinges for the pages and all i'm doing is adding some glue to that flap popping my page in place and then that's giving it a few minutes or a few seconds for that glue to grab um before doing anything else um because otherwise that's exactly what happens. It then pings apart. So you do just need to, to give it time to, to, to let that glue before you can add the back page. And what you're doing by doing this is covering those little flaps and adding your pages at the same time so that you've got a really secure system. And because you folded the flaps back and forth several times when you were um, making it, you then have um, free movement of, of what's going on to make life easy. And then the other side, I'm adding a good or reasonable amount of glue all over. I'm lining the, two, the page pieces up and so that they look neat and tidy and are aligned with each of them. And then it need, again, it needs to glue. And I've just got lots of little clips that I'm using just to hold all the bits together so that the glue has a chance to set before I do 
you know, um, rather than the pages springing apart from each other. And I do think that it's really quite helpful to have lots of little clips for, for doing this with um, because you just don't have enough fingers and thumbs to manage to do it any other way. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. So clearly I decided I needed an extra page or not, as the case may be. There we are. So we've got another pocket page here. So all I'm going to do is repeat that process for here. So that's going to go into there and just be left to dry. Now, when you're putting your pages in, just make sure that you've got them orientated around the right way because there's nothing more frustrating to get to this point. I think, hmm, that put that one in upside down. Um, and if you've waited at this point to let it glue properly before um, adding anything else, then, you're, you know, then you, you won't be able to separate it easily. So it, just have a little think about how you're putting stuff together at this stage any critical point i would say is just double check that you've got everything orientated the way you want it to be orientated um because there is nothing worse than putting something together and then going I shouldn't have done that um and we'll have all yeah we'll all do it yeah we'll, um so it's just worth an extra reminder there we are so that's the pages then tucked in. Now, when I'm doing these at home, I make all my pages, put them all in place, and then add all of the little tags and the flips and the flat, you know, uh, uh, and um, tuck in, tucked in elements rather than trying to do the whole lot all together. So, um, just because I've put them all in, don't feel that that's you know, the only way you have to do it. You can obviously do them page by page as you want to do it and add, add the tuck spots in later on. So there we are, we have that. So that's clearly not going to go in there at the moment because I've got all of those clips in. I should, with a bit of luck, be able to take some of those that I put on early on off now give myself a bit more wiggle room the, the last pages will need a bit longer but that will give me a little bit of extra time and then they're in securely which makes life easier so and that then i thought wow what from here what am i going to do to embellish and add some details and things to to the cover um and essentially, this is just layers of cut elements from the paper collection that I've put together. But this is where I've used my sculpt cream paste molded elements. So these are the cream paste that I made at, you know, before at the show because it takes time to set. Um, and I'm going to just add some little bits of copper um, ceramica to that, um, you know, just to, to bring out all of the beautiful detail. Just like the bigger moulds, the, the, the texture impression moulds, again, have masses and masses of detail in them. So uh, it's worth just taking the time, adding some of I'm choosing a couple of colours that I felt worked well with the collection, but you know, you, you can use whichever ones you've got at home or not at all, or just even if you've got very little product yet, though I'm sure that will be rectified quite rapidly if most if because <clears throat> I think most of us are Slamperia addicts and have lots of stuff in our stuff. But if you you know if you're at the stage where you're just beginning, then actually you could just use some uh, your know, dry brush, some um you know, acrylic paint over the top to highlight the details. Um, for speed, I'm just going to use my glue gun 
and I'm deliberately leaving that little bit free at the edges because that's going to make my life easier. So Rachel, what are you up to? Because I'm going to be just layering from here on out. All right, I used, um, I popped a little dot of this um, Argento Iridescente um, Aqua Colour um, in my palette that I'm going to use for the eye. Now, I could, I could have used black, but I think that would have been too dark. And this is just a really nice way of adding. Uh, so I'm just taking a tiny, tiny, tiny amount on my brush. And then I'm just following that little line. And then I'm just blotting it with my finger as well. Because I don't want it to be a massive line of paint. I just want it to define her eyes. So I'm just popping that little bit on and blotting it. And then I'll probably just well not probably I will because I'm going to do it now I'm just um, taking a little bit of that um, the, the same tone I used on her skin and I'm just going over there so it just takes it down again to a smaller line and gives the gives the appearance of you know real fine detail painting and now I've done that, I'm just going to give her a quick blast. It won't take a minute. There we go. And you can see I've also painted the flowers. And then the next thing I want to do with her now is I'm going to just, I've got some gold wax now, and I'm just using my fingertips and I'm just coming over the hair. And that's going to give me some really nice detail to her hair. So that with those two layers of colour we've done and the black gesso in the background really gives the illusion of depth in her, in her hair there. So I'm just going to turn her around so I can get to where I want to get. So I've done her hair. I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to use some more gold wax now in the background I'm picking up all the detail down here as well I could use a little brush but I quite like using my fingers for this I like to be able to feel what I'm doing so I'm just adding this gold wax all over a little bit on the edge as well. Yeah. There we go. So and then go on. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so I'm at a point where where if if I just add this piece of paper, which is very pretty, onto here without doing something to stabilize it, it's going to wobble and crease over time. So I'm just going to re retrieve a piece of pizza box from somewhere and literally chop, you know, chop some strips of cut strips of pizza box um, to, to stabilize that piece of, um, of paper. Because if I don't, then as you say, over time, it's going to ruckle up and it really won't look very nice. So it again, you know, just work out where you want to put your pieces and then stabilize it. Um, now I'm not going to paint the side of mine because actually it's craft card and that, color, that sort of works with the project. But if you're doing a project that's predominantly white, then it might well be worth just um, painting it white before you start yeah uh, to do it so there we are so that piece will then sit much more stable on there and adding some glue hot glue actually helps because you've got a little bit of extra depth there so there we are 
so back to you rachel because i'm back to larry but i just wanted to explain that little bit um thank you at all um the next thing i'm going to do is what i like to do with these sort of things and i think it adds another dimension again well, i'm all about my dimension um is i'm just using a bit of varnish um this is an uh, acrylic wax that i'm using and it will just varnish my whole piece and it's absolutely fine to use over all of this and it will just give me that nice gentle sheen so if people haven't got an acrylic uh, varnish then the, the uh, medium that i use for glazing my resins to again to protect them and to give them a little glossy coat is the stamperia fluid gloss um, medium which will give oh, you a little perfect. shiny surface yeah. um yeah. and again protect it so you know it th there's products for everyone uh, from uh, from you know all around you know that suit everyone really it's depending on budgets and you know of course you can then build your stash over time you know just because we make on a regular basis for some period definitely doesn't mean that we have unlimited budgets to spend you know and we you know to to spend stuff um <clears throat> on our own you just have to um to you know to build your stash gradually bit by bit by bit but it, you know over time you'll be surprised actually as, as to how quickly um your stash will grow if you're a samperia aficionado it definitely grows quite quickly um, and then you need a giant size craft room for adding stuff into so i want to add this sort of um wooden element to the front of my piece and again it's going to wobble if i'm not careful so i've just chopped it roughly chopping you can be much more accurate if you choose to be but it's going to be a hidden piece so i'm just going to pop this under here so that i've got um a couple of you know there to build it up and give it a little bit more um stability with what's going on so that can go. I can't remember exactly how I have that. So there, that way. There we are. That can go on to there. Second piece can go on the top. And as you can see, I'm really not fussy about covering elements up. What I want is a layer dimensional piece with lots of bits just popping out from underneath things rather than it all being on top so there we are so i've now got a really quite nice <clears throat> dimensional piece lots of layers lots of extra pieces lots of extra stringy bits of glue which is of course is always unhelpful but hey ho you have what you want and then you can you know at this point it's up to you what you add i quite like chopping things in half so i'm going to chop one of the circles from the pack in half going to add a little bit there i don't like my fussy cutting it's got a white border so i'm just going to add a little bit of of brown ink to disguise that and i know i didn't do that inside and said be consistent but on the outside it's maybe let you go know, it's a different separate part so that can go there and where that's the other half of that and you can carry on and i've got a little word cut from the um papers here it says creativity so i've got a title because i like words on my pieces um that, that can go there these little bits just add a little, little bit of extra detail <clears throat> and you can carry on then adding as many pieces as you want i'm just going to declip the rest of my pages so i before turning it over so just bear with me rachel what are you up to with your um, I am sticking my ribbons down. I'm just using the um, the extra forte um, glue for that, the extra strong glue, and I'm sticking them down in place, only on the front cover, 
they don't need to be stuck down completely and then I'm going to add my <coughs> metal piece there and that's the bulk of my album done and then of course I've added lots of um, ephemera inside I can show you um, I can show you a couple of how I do a couple of the pages just to make it more interesting I've added there are some really nice frames in the, um, the clear die cuts which is DFLD CP20 and they work rather splendidly on these shorter pages and that's the nice thing about having having things if I can get into it um, <laughs> I can't get into my packaging um, having little windows and things like that just to add a little bit of interest or it could be that you want to um, you want to do something completely different and um, pop some paper in here and use it as a little writing journal or whatever size you do so I can add I can add this frame here to the length of the other pages and add things on with all, all kinds of things so I'll just I'll do that now so I'm using the extra strong glue again because I'm sticking plastic so I want something that's got a bit of a bit of oomph to it it's a little bit too much there there we go and I can stick that in there oh dear a little bit of a squidge of glue there <coughs> and oh there's a nice heart that could go there so let's pop that <coughs> In the, I mean, really and truly, with something like this, you want to decorate it to your own, your own taste. And there are so many beautiful pieces in this collection that you'll be able to, well, you'll be spoiled for choice, as you always are with stamp area. So I'm just push, pushing a bit of, a little bit of ribbon through because that adds. It's a little bit of texture to what I'm doing. So I'll just tie that in a little knot at the top. Oh. And I quite like to make sure that they're long enough to stick out of the top a little bit. Just to add a little bit more interest again. So let's stick that on there. So that's that's the page there. Start, and then I'll carry on in that fashion now, adding various things. I know that my pages are fitting comfortably in there, and again, if I want to take a page out and work on it, I can just slide it out and work on it or replace it if I want to replace it so or add anything I want into there so I'm just going to trim this now now that I know that everything's fitting nicely excellent now because when I was putting my album together I decided to use the smaller piece for the for the back rather than the front I'm I'm just having a fiddle here to get all my pieces to to fit together so if you do that and you've constructed your album in spite of me saying check and check and double check again because we're all fallible um don't fret about it there's always a way around correcting things so but it's i 
it was entirely my own fault for, for well, I, you know, just the way I put things together. <clears throat> but on my back of my original one, all I've literally done is add some pieces from the collection. And then I needed something to cover it with. Now, in this one, the original one, the flap will go up and over, and this ties round. And because I've got them round the wrong way, because I'm an idiot, or a Wally, or whichever way you want to put it, I'm just going to have to adjust what I do. But actually, it'll still work. The, the album will just have a slightly different shape um, at the end. So for here... I'm just going to add a little bit of glue, pop in a piece of ribbon so it aligns with the one on the front. And then, because if you just leave it, well, it just looks plain ugly, just left exactly as it is, it has to be said. So, and I don't like ugly because. Why would you want ugly on an album that you've spent ages actually putting together? So I'm literally just going to cut out another of the circles from the pack, chop it off, leaving the words visible, and then add that some glue. Now, often I would just use wet glue entirely for gluing things like the ribbons in place, but Again, in a live, you just need something that's going to grab more quickly. Um, so there we are. So that goes there, that goes there. That will go into there. And it will tie. Nicely to give me a finished piece. Clearly don't need three feet of ribbon. So that's there. I think Rachel might have finished, but there we are. And then all that is left for me to do is add some areas of glitter. Pop it together. How much you add is, of course, entirely up to you. But it sort of pulls all of the layers and you're not joins everything and links everything so I do think it is worth just doing that and I've chosen a mixture of gold glamour sparkles and I'm just going to be very wasteful so I apologize if it offends anyone's sensibility pop that onto there but once it's all dried after the live I will have a mixed pack and we'll pop we'll put it into a pot um because this bronze and gold combo is actually one I use quite a lot. So it will get utilised. So if you have got, you know, used a couple of colours because you want to custom colour your glitters, don't hesitate just to do that and then pop them more together. So there is our album. So hopefully that's Rachel. I think Rachel might be finished and I certainly I am. Some. I am. I am. I hope that that works for everyone. So thank you, ladies, for joining us this morning. Um, during our first live of the year. Um, it's amazing how you get out of the habit of doing things um, over time. And if you have questions, please then um, obviously put comments here. And I'm sure we'll both photograph our pet mates and ultimately we'll get them put up onto the page so that you've got them for continuing inspiration long term. Okay. Thank you, Mary, for joining us. I can now actually look at the comments coming through. Yes. So, um, Thank you, Mary. I, I suspect poor Lucrezia has had to go off and do some of her other stuff. So we probably aren't going to have a samperia closing little video at the end of this so so maybe if everyone um is happy we will just be able to close and say thank you very much for joining us we hope you've enjoyed our projects and our inspiration today 
and I'm sure that we look forward to seeing you virtually on a live again shortly. And if we're not actually doing it, then both of us have a habit of bobbing into the others and watching what our uh, other creatives um, do to inspire. Um,